Hello, welcome to the ARC Online. My name is Lucy and I'm one of the ARC team members. How's your week been? I hope you're having a lovely weekend. I'd like to introduce you to two of my helpers here. I have Jill and Jack. Um, can you remember which book of the Bible we've been looking at? Charlotte. Acts. The book of Acts, that's right. And Joel, can you remember who wrote the book of Acts? Dr Luke. That's right, well done. Well, today we're thinking about journeys and we're thinking about Paul's journey on a ship. But before we do that, we're going to do an activity. I have here a boat and we're going to put it into the water in the middle of the tray. I'm going to ask Joel and Charlotte to sit at stand at opposite ends or sit at opposite ends and they're going to take a straw. Thank you. And when I say go, we start blowing and Joel has to get his to the opposite side and Charlotte has to get hers to the opposite side. Okay, shall we have a go? When I say go, we start blowing. Ready? Steady? Go. Well done. Shall we swap sides? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll put it back in the middle again. Ready? Steady? Well done. That was really well done. Now, was that hard or was that easy? I mean hard. What made it hard? Um, fly blowing it opposite and draw it on the other side. So someone was blowing it in the opposite direction, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, today we're going to be looking at Paul's journey on a ship that was blown about by very strong winds. Over to you, Anne. Thanks to Lucy, Joel and Charlotte. That was great. Our quiz today is a true or false quiz. For true, put your thumbs up and reach high up into the sky. And for false, put your thumbs down and reach low down to the ground. If you don't know, have a guess and see if you're right. So a few weeks ago, we heard that Paul arrived in Jerusalem. After he arrived, the Lord spoke to him. Is this true or false? The Lord said to Paul, be brave. You will tell people about me in Rome as well as in Jerusalem. Is that true or false? That's true. The Lord told Paul that he would tell people in Rome about him, as well as in Jerusalem. As we've seen, Paul faced many problems in Jerusalem, but he had the comfort of knowing that God was in control and would get him through them so that he could get to Rome. Paul then had to appear at four different trials, first before the Jewish leaders, then before the Roman governor, Felix, then before the next Roman governor, Festus, and then before King Agrippa. Here's number two. No one found Paul guilty of any crime. Is that true or false? That's true. Paul was originally arrested to help him to escape from the angry crowd. And then when he was put on trial, none of these leaders found him guilty of any crime. Paul was clearly innocent. Here's number three. Even though Paul was innocent of any crime, he had to spend more than two years in prison in Caesarea. Is that true or false? That's true. Governor Felix left Paul in prison for more than two years, even though he had done nothing wrong. Governor Felix treated Paul very unfairly. Number four. Governor Festus wanted Paul to be taken back from Caesarea to Jerusalem. So is this true or false? Since Paul was a Roman citizen, he appealed to Caesar, the Roman emperor. Is that true or false?
That's true. Paul appealed to Caesar, the Roman emperor, so that he would be taken to Rome. As we said earlier, Paul knew that God's plan was that he should tell people in Rome about Jesus. Paul's last trial was before King Agrippa. Paul used the opportunity to talk about how he came to believe in Jesus. Is that true or false? Well, that's also true. Paul told King Agrippa how he had hurt many Christians, but after meeting the risen Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus, he did a complete U-turn and started to tell lots of people about Jesus and to tell them to repent and turn to God. Last one, number six. After seeing King Agrippa, Paul was allowed to go free. Is that true or false? Well, that one's false. Paul had appealed to Caesar, so he was kept in prison, ready to be taken to Rome. Today, Nathan is going to tell us the first part of the exciting true story of Paul's journey to Rome. But first, Lucy's going to pray. Thanks, Anne. Before we hear from God's word, we're going to pray. So let's put our hands together and our eyes closed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, the Bible. Please help us to learn and to understand from it. In your name, Amen. Over to you, Nathan, for today's True Bible Story. Morning, everyone. In today's True Story from the Bible, we'll learn about the dramatic way in which God brought Paul and his friends closer to Rome, where he was going to stand trial before Caesar. It was decided that Paul and his friend Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, would sail for Italy. Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a Roman centurion named Julius. Luke tells us they boarded a ship that was going to sail along the coast of the province of Asia, modern day Turkey. The next day they landed at Sidon and Julius, as a kindness to Paul, allowed Paul to go and see his friends there so he could care for their needs even though Paul was a prisoner. They set sail again, but the wind was going against them, so they sailed in the shelter of Cyprus, and then across the open sea until they landed at Myra, which you can see on the map here. From there, Julius found a ship sailing for Italy and put Luke and Paul and the other prisoners on board. For many days, it was slow going. The wind was not going in the direction they wanted to sail the ship. They sailed instead around the coast of Crete and came to a place called Fair Havens, which you can see on this map. They'd lost a lot of time and sailing had become dangerous because it was getting nearer to winter. Paul warned them. Men, I can see that our journey is going to be a disaster. It will bring great loss to the ship and to the cargo and to our own lives as well. But the centurion did not listen to Paul. He followed the advice of the pilot and the owner of the ship. And they decided to sail on and hope to reach a harbour called Phoenix, which would be a better place to stay over the winter. So when a gentle south wind started to blow, they took the chance to set sail along the coast of the island. Before long, a wind of hurricane speed swept down on them from the island. And the ship was caught up in the storm. There was nothing that the sailors could do, and they were driven along by the wind. They passed by a small island, but they couldn't safely use their lifeboat in the storm, so they hoisted that aboard. And they passed ropes under the ship to keep it held together. And the storm was battering the ship so much that the next day they began to throw the cargo, all the goods that they were taking with them, aboard. On the third day, they threw the rigging overboard with their hands. And for many days, the storm continued to rage. They'd seen neither sun nor stars in the sky. Luke says they finally gave up all hope of being saved. 
When they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail for Crete. Then you wouldn't have suffered this damage and loss. But now, be brave, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So be brave, men. I have faith in God. It will happen just as he told me. We must run aground on some island. God had sent Paul an angel to encourage him, and once again promised Paul that he must stand trial in Rome. Paul knew, despite all the danger of the huge storm, that God was controlling the whole situation, and God would do as he said, and save them from harm. On the fourteenth night, at about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. They measured the depth of the water, about 120 feet deep. A short time later, they measured again and 90 feet deep. They were fast approaching land. Fearing that they would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the back of the boat and prayed for daylight to be able to see. And then, in an attempt to escape the ship, the sailors pretended that they were going to lower more anchors from the front of the boat, but instead they let the lifeboat down into the sea. Paul said to the centurion, Unless these sailors stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes holding the lifeboat, and they let it drift away. If the sailors had left the boat, there would have been nobody left to steer the ship. So it was very good that the sailors' plots to escape were stopped. God was still keeping his promise to keep them from harm through the storm. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. He said, For the last fourteen days you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now, I urge you, eat some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. Paul gave thanks to God in front of them all, broke some bread and began to eat. Everyone was encouraged and ate some food. When everyone had eaten as much as they wanted, they made the ship lighter by throwing the grain into the sea. The daylight came. They did not recognise the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground, if they could. So they cut loose the anchors, they raised the ship's sail to the wind, and they made for the beach. But the ship struck a ridge of sand beneath the water. The front of the ship was stuck fast and would not move. The back of the ship was broken to pieces by the pounding of the waves. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners, including Paul, to prevent them swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to keep Paul alive, so he stopped them from carrying out their plan. This looked like another dangerous situation for Paul. The soldiers could have killed him and the rest of the prisoners, but God was keeping them safe, just as he said he would do. Julius the centurion ordered everyone who could swim to jump overboard and get to shore. Everyone else was to get there on planks or other pieces of the ship, as they'd already cut loose the lifeboat. Well, what do you think? Did they make it to land? Well, God had directed everything to happen just as he had promised Paul, and everyone made it to land safely. It hadn't looked good for the men on the ship. After two weeks in a terrible storm, they'd given up all hope. But Paul could trust in the Lord's promise that he would be a witness about Jesus in Rome. The Lord kept everyone from harm. Even when the sailors had tried to escape, or the soldiers had wanted to kill Paul and the other prisoners, because he had a plan for Paul to stand trial before Caesar 
and continue spreading the message of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Now the men didn't know it, but the storm and the shipwreck had landed them on the island of Malta, far to the west of where they'd been trying to get to, and much closer to Rome, where Paul knew that God was leading him. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you that you showed your power and love for Paul as you kept your promise to keep him and everyone else on board the ship from harm as he journeyed through the storm towards Rome. And thank you that your plan to spread the good news about Jesus to the ends of the earth cannot be stopped. Please help us to trust that you are powerful and good and that you keep all your promises. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now we are going to do three actions from today's story about Paul and the promise of the angel of keeping them safe. And in the boat, there was a few things that happened. Firstly, they were rowing in the boat. So when you hear me say rowing the boat, sit down, make sure you're safe as space, sit down and do a rowing action as you were. When I say the words as you were, Get it back up into starting position. Starting position. And the next one I'm going to say is caught in the storm. And when you hear that, you sit down as if you're in a boat and wave your arms around in the air. A bit like a mad person, you know. Ah, oh, very. Wave your arms in the air. As you are. And a final action is. Is do the cartwheel? Swimming to shore. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> and when I say swimming to shore, you're going to get down flat on the floor. Make sure your surroundings are safe and do swimming action. Swimming to shore. <laughs> I hope you can do a great job at home. <laughs> As you were. Okay, stand straight. Are you ready at home? Can I show you? Are you ready? Thing? So it's sure. Oh, very good. Very steady. Ah. As you were. Rowing the boat. Sit down and you row the boat. Row the boat. Row the boat. Sit down. Row the boat. As you are. in the storm. As you are, rowing the boat. Sit down, rowing action, row that boat, rowing away. as you are, and then swim to shore. Down as you go, swimming to shore, some backstroke action there, could be butterfly at home, whatever you choose, as you are. Caught in the storm. Oh, caught in the storm. Yeah, as you were, row the boat. Quickly, get down and row the boat. As you were, swimming to shore. Oh, be careful of your hands, you see there. As you are, now, because we're going to do one rapid fire round. Row the boat. Oh, somebody is always swimming to shore. Caught in the storm. Swimming to shore, rowing the boat, as you were, rowing the boat. I think they've done very well, as you were. Now, Arkers, well done, all of you at home. And I just need to as show you something. the angel said to Paul that Arcus, everyone came back sa safely. And just one last thing. We have something that Ezra would like to share with you. Cartwheel. Thank you very much. And back to you, Anne. Bye. Thanks to Ben, Joshi and Ezra. That was brilliant. As usual, there's a worksheet on the church website. You'll need a Bible to answer the questions on that. 
Before we finish, we're going to remind ourselves of our memory verse for the Book of Acts. So, say it with me, with the actions. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's do that again. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That's what Jesus said to his disciples before he went up to heaven, right at the start of the book of Acts. He said that they would receive the power of the Holy Spirit and they would tell other people about all they had seen Jesus do in the city of Jerusalem, in all the regions of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, we're coming near to the end of our series on the book of Acts. And we've seen Paul and the other disciples taking the good news about Jesus to Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and beyond. Next week, we're going to be looking at chapter 28, the last chapter in the book of Acts. And we're going to see how God uses Paul to fulfil his promises. Have a good week. Bye.